Okay, so next we're going to use real data to estimate the effect of education on wages um, using instrumental variables. Um, and we won't go through the first stage predictions, second stage thing, we'll just use IV robust. Um, so this will be more, more similar to just like real instrumental variables analysis instead of the really long pedagogical version. Um, so we'll make a new heading here called effect of education on wages real. Okay, so we're gonna load the data first. Um, we could either do read CSV down here and say um, ed real equals well, read underscore CSV and then we can say data and I press tab so I can get this menu thing and it's called wage2 is the name of the data set. Um, I could either do this down here or Generally, good practice is to also have all of your data loading up at the top, um, just so that when somebody opens this file or you six months from now opens this file, you can see all of the libraries you need to install and you can see all of the data sets that you need to have in the right place. That way you're not surprised halfway through the document, like, oh, another CSV file. Um, but for the sake of doing this, I'll just keep it down here at the bottom. Um, so here's Ed Real. If we load it, we should have a new data set called ed real which has a ton of different columns in it um, wage and hours and iq and i have no idea what kww means education experience tenure age married black south urban birth order fe or father's education mother's education cool there's a whole bunch of stuff in there um, so we're gonna do some things with this stuff but right now, like some of these columns are miserable to use, like Meduk and Feduk or like father's education, mother's education. We can rename some of these things so that it's it's easier to work with. So to do that, I'm going to read CSV here, but then I'm going to add a pipe here and we'll use our friend, the rename function. And so we're going to rename some of these columns. So we'll call this education equals Eduk because that's what it's called in the data set. Um, we're gonna use two instruments in this case. We're gonna use father's education as an instrument and mother's education as an instrument. Um, so we're gonna say education dad equals F-E-D-U-C, um, cause that's the column name in this data set. If we look at, let's close these. If we look at ed real, um, it's F-E-D-U-C and M-E-D-U-C. So we're just gonna rename those. Um, to education mom equals M-E-D-U-C. So if we run that and look at ed real, um, now we have education mom, we have education dad, and one of these should be called just education. There's education, cool. Um, one last thing we're gonna do just for the sake of making this easier to work with. Some of these rows have missing data in them like birth order here. Um, this person doesn't have a value for education dad. Um, so just for the sake of simplicity, we're gonna get rid of all of the rows that have any missing data in them. Um, this happens behind the scenes if you run the model. Um, anyway, if there are any incomplete cases that have missing values, it'll omit them, but we'll just kind of do it here just for the sake of, of doing it here. So the function we do for that is na.omit so it's gonna load the CSV file, rename some of these columns, and then omit any rows that have missing values in them. So if we run it now, and we look at Ed Real, before it was like 900 and something rows, now we're at 663 rows, and there's no missing values. Cool. So we have a data set we can work with. Um, I don't like all of these notifications that read CSV makes, because that's like, too much information. So I can come here and just say message equals false. So now when I run this, none of that will show up in the knitted document, which is nice. Okay, so we need to do, um, we need to check the validity of the instruments before we do any two stage least squares things. So we want to check instruments. Um, so we need to check for three things, relevancy and exclusion and exogeneity. Okay, so for relevancy, we want to see if father's education is 
associated strongly with your education, and we want to see if mother's education is also strongly associated with your education. Um, so we can do this with um, statistics. Um, the whole thing can be done with stats, which is nice. So we'll just come here and add a new chunk, and we will call this model um, check instrument. We can name this whatever we want. So we will have this be LM. So our outcome, or we have no outcome here. We just want to check the relationship between father's education and regular education. So our outcome here is education is explained by education dad plus education mom. And the data set was ed real. And if we look at the coefficients here, so tidy model check instruments, and then we look at the model diagnostics because we want that F statistic, we'll say glance model check instruments. So if we run this chunk and look at it, here's the first output thing. So this is showing that um, for every one year of education your dad has, um, you have 0.2 years more education. For every year of education your mom has, then you have 0.14 years of education. Um, we need to see if those are significant or not. And if we look at the p-value here, that's really small. That e to the negative 13 means move this decimal point 13 places that way, so tiny. e to the negative 5, move this decimal point 5 places that way, so again, tiny. Um, so according to that, like they are strongly associated with education. So that's good for relevance. We also want to see if the F statistic for this model is big. Um, so if we look at the glance output here, the statistic here is 83, um, which in the pre-October 2020 world when um, a paper was uh, a paper came out that showed that F statistics should be big, like 104 or bigger. Um, the main rule of thumb is you want an F statistic of 10 or bigger. 83 is bigger than 10, so that's a good strong statistic. Um, but in the new world of it actually should be 104 or more, that's not quite there. Um, there are other things that you can do to check um, if that statistic is weak. Um, and I'll show you that not in this video, but if you look at the course website and in the longer example there, I show you how to kind of test for weak instruments and there's other ways of, of, of checking it. Um, so in this case, we'll just say it's, it's relatively strong-ish, sure. Okay, so we've checked for relevancy. Um, we can plot this if we want. We can draw two different plots. We say ggplot, um, the data is ed real. Um, the x-axis is uh, father's education, which we called something education underscore dad, so education underscore dad. The Y was education, and we'll just say geom point. Let's see what that looks like. Cool, so that's fun. There's lots of overplotting here because um, in the fake data I had, I had possible values of like 5.628 years of education. Here it's all rounded, so it's just five and six and seven and eight, um, and so this is our plot, which is great. Um, you can't really see much going on here. It's just a grid of dots. Um, so to account for some of that overplotting, we can make um, some of these dots more invisible. So if there are lots of dots overlapping, then the dot should be darker. And if there aren't, it should be lighter. So we'll do that by adding an alpha characteristics here, the characteristic here. So if we say alpha equals one, that means all of the dots will be perfectly visible. If we say alpha equals zero, it means all of the dots will be perfectly invisible. So if we do something like alpha 0.5, each of the dots will be halfway transparent. Let's see what that looks like. So you can see there's some trend, like these are darker, those are lighter. Um, 0.5 not, might not be enough, so let's change it to 0.2. Cool, now you can see some more patterns here. It's really kind of dark in this area, light out there. Let's bump it down to point 0.1. Cool, so you can see some better patterns there. Um, that gray background makes it harder to see these dots here. So to get rid of the gray background, we can actually change the theme of the whole plot. So we'll say theme underscore BW for black and white. Um, and that gets rid of the gray background. Um, and that looks nice. 
We can add a smooth line here so we can see the trends. We say geom smooth, and we'll say method equals lm, and we'll add a plus sign at the end so it connects to the theme. So if we hit play now, we should get a nice line. Cool. So as father's education goes up, your education goes up, and that's a positive relationship. It's significant. Um, the F statistic is okay-ish, and that's good. Um, we can also look at mother's education. If we just copy this whole chunk and then paste it down here. Um, so rather than putting education dad on the x-axis, we'll put education mom on the x-axis and run that. And it should look like that, which is pretty similar to that one. Just some minor differences, but it's still significant. Um, and we are good to go with relevancy. So it's a fairly relevant instrument, or both of these jointly are a fairly, fairly relevant instrument. Next, we want to check exclusion. Here, there's not really a statsy way to um, check it. This is more of a DAG situation. So if we come back to the DAG for this dual um, instrument idea, this is what we're looking at. We're saying that mother's education and father's education both cause education, which then cause earnings. So this is a story. You have to say, does mother's education cause your earnings in any other way beyond education? And if you can think of some other pathway, like mother's education causes you to be more involved in extracurricular activities, which then causes your earnings, we just broke the exclusion restriction. Oh no. So try to think of other nodes where this can get to earnings without going through education. Um, and if you can, then oh no. If you can't, then you're good. So that's what you do here with the exclusion. You say this is exclusive because it is. And then exogeneity. This is the idea that um, none of these red nodes here connect to mother's education or connect to father's education. That these are totally separate from the rest of these unobserved characteristics um, or other confounding characteristics that influence both earnings and education. So if you can prove that through a convincing story, then you're good. Um, there's no statsy way of doing that because often these nodes here aren't actually columns that you can measure. Um, if you had an ability column, you could check the correlation between ability and mother's education. Um, and then if that's zero, then you're good. But you don't have that column, so you can't actually do stats for that. So we'll also just say this is exogenous because it is. Okay, so we've checked the background details and we are ready to move on to the actual model estimation.